everybody. Can you hear me okay in the back? Great, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> My name is Ray Sullivan. I'm the executive director of CCOC, and I have the honor of welcoming you all here uh, to this fantastic housing development at, at Beaver Barracks. We are the very proud owners and landlords of, um, of what, uh, certainly for us, raised the bar in terms of green living and sustainable living and social housing. So, so welcome to us. And we have with us leaders today uh, from the Government of Canada, the Government of Ontario, uh, folks in the audience from the City of Ottawa as well, and local housing leaders from, from across Ottawa, and indeed across the country, uh, and we'll introduce people in good time. Uh, but at the very start, uh, it is my honour to introduce to you a good friend of mine, the President of the Canadian Housing and Renewal Association, Bridget McKesson. Bonjour et bienvenue. Merci de vous joindre à nous afin de promouvoir la journée nationale du logement. This morning I have the pleasure of introducing you to an elected official that has shown CHRA a key interest in addressing our current social housing challenges. In her new role as Minister of Environment and Climate Change, she will be uniquely positioned to address some of our country's most complex and pressing issues. She is also Member of Parliament for Ottawa Centre, a riding that, like many others in Canada, is facing the challenges associated with a lack of affordable and social housing. There is a link between finding solutions to our social housing shortage and climate change. In fact, Canada is at a crossroads in terms of investment in social infrastructure and environmental stewardship, as both aspects have been in crisis for a long time. We believe our new government has an opportunity to show international leadership on both fronts by building much needed social housing while taking urgent action on climate change. On that note, I truly have the pleasure of introducing you to the Honorable Catherine McKenna, Minister of Environment and Climate Change and Member of Parliament for Ottawa Centre. Delighted to be here. Uh, it's certainly a great honor to be here today with CHRA and its many housing partners to celebrate National Housing Day. C'est tout un honneur d'être ici aujourd'hui pour souligner la Journée nationale du logement. En tant que votre nouvelle députée d'Ottawa Centre, je situe le besoin crucial d'investissement accru dans le logement locatif abordable et le logement social à l'avant-scène de mes interventions. As your new MP for Ottawa Centre, I am placing the critical need for greater investments in affordable rental and social housing at the forefront of my actions. With over 10,000 households on the wait list in Ottawa for social housing and wait times lasting on average five years, we truly have an affordable housing and homelessness crisis in our community. Nationally, one in four Canadian households is paying more than they can afford for housing. And one in eight cannot find affordable housing that is safe, suitable, and well-maintained. Our government is deeply committed to addressing this housing crisis. Notre gouvernement est très déterminé à résoudre la présente crise de, du logement. We will ensure adequate, sustainable, and predictable funding for social housing providers target new capital investments in affordable rental housing, and invest in innovative programs for supportive housing. All critical measures to tackling the affordable housing and homelessness crisis. We will renew federal leadership in housing, starting with a new 10-year investment in social infrastructure. I'm also here today as the Minister of Environment and Climate Change, and it is extremely important for us to look at future investment and growth in affordable and social, social housing through environmental lens. Our government will protect Canada's communities from the challenges of climate change while growing the economy by supporting significant new investments in green infrastructure. We have some incredibly good examples right here in Ottawa of how we can support housing needs using a green approach, including some of Ottawa community housing and Centre Town Citizens Ottawa Center Town Citizens Ottawa Corporation's facilities. I look forward to touring Beaver Barracks so that I can see firsthand 
how this mixed affordable rental housing development is a model for sustainable site planning. In addition to being an example of how social infrastructure and environmental priorities can be united together. The role of cities in housing and climate change is paramount. Last week I met with Mayor Watson and discussed a wide range of topics including affordable housing and how, as we partner invest in light rail transit, it will mark the single biggest reduction in greenhouse gases in the city, in the history of the city of Ottawa. On Wednesday, uh, I had a productive meeting with the mayor of Edmonton where he shared best practices for urban development, net zero housing, and more. Mayor Iveson told me about a remarkable company, Landmark Homes, which has built over 12,000 houses through sustainable and efficient techniques. This afternoon, I'll be hearing best practices from the mayor of Vancouver. Be it housing, transportation, or other important areas, our priority is to work together with the provinces and cities and demonstrate that the economy and the environment go hand in hand together. Finally, I have some great news to share with you. My community office will be located in this very building at 107 Catherine Street beside Yasser Nafti's office. <laughs> to ensure that the constituents of Ottawa Centre are well served and have access to our community offices. Alors j'ai des excellentes nouvelles à partager avec vous. Mon bureau de comté sera situé dans cet immeuble même. I'd like to close by thanking you for inviting me to this event. It is wonderful to see all levels of government represented here along with stakeholders and some of the tenants of Beaver Parks. I know that we will work hard together to end homelessness and housing vulnerability in our community. Through this cooperation, we can also confront a major challenge, how we promote green technologies and materials in the housing sector, while at the same time making quality, environment-friendly housing more accessible and affordable to the average household. Thank you. Merci. to hear your comments and we're so pleased to be on this journey with you. Um, so I'm happy to be here on behalf of the Ontario Nonprofit Housing Association in partnership with ONFA. My name is Meg McCallum and I'm the president of ONFA. ONFA represents over 700 members of uh, housing providers <coughs> providing housing to over 400,000 residents across Ontario. We know that we work best when we all work together and it will take all levels of government working together with housing groups at the ground level in each community to ensure housing for all Ontarians. I'm very pleased that Ontario's provincial government is championing the issue of affordable housing through its commitment to ending chronic homelessness in 10 years, through its property reduction strategy, and through the imminent release of its long-term uh, affordable housing strategy this fall. So with the encouragement of strong housing mandates at all levels of government, housing providers across the province are ready to take up our shovels and deliver green retrofits to our existing stock sustainable new housing to meet the needs of low-income and vulnerable residents in our communities. I'm very pleased to be here to introduce my member of Provincial Parliament, the, uh, Honorable Yasin Nafti, uh, Government House Leader, Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services, and MPP for Ottawa Centre. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, Meg, for that very kind introduction. It's an honour to work for you. Uh, I'm very excited to be here along with my colleague and, and friend Catherine McKenna. I think this is our first official event yes. together. So it's a amazing day. Happy about housing. Uh, and you heard the exciting news that how Catherine and I will be able to continue to work together in close cooperation uh, by not only co-locating, of course, our community offices uh, right here in uh, this incredible, incredible community uh, that we still call Beaver Barracks. I know. Ray, we don't name things at CCOC, but it's professionally still known as, as, as Beaver Barracks, which has been for us, uh, having our community office here for the last few, three years, been an, uh, an amazing place uh, to serve the community, not just around here, but in Centre Town and, and all across uh, the riding of Ottawa uh, Centre. One of the great benefits I see being located here is uh, not only you've got uh, uh, CCOC very close by, we've got the YMCA next door with the services there, the Catholic Immigration Center, there's the City of Ottawa Employment Office down on Catherine Street, the police station next door, 
and the city hall is not that far away from as well. And on that note, I want to welcome our Deputy Mayor, Paul Manette, uh, here with us, and uh, City Councilor Matthew Fleury, who is the chair of the Ottawa Community Housing Board as well. So welcome to both of you and your leadership in this endeavor. Before I, 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 I talk a little bit about what the province is doing and how excited we are uh, to, to work with our new federal government on, on a long-term housing strategy, I wanted to share a, a, a story for, uh, with you. A story that comes right from this particular building. So about two years ago, I was up uh, uh, just knocking on doors that I sort of tend to do every weekend and just uh, going around the neighbors and, and offering my, my help and my services uh, to them. And I knocked at, at, a, at a door and a gentleman, I would say, in his mid-50s uh, came. Now anybody who's gone canvassing, when you knock on the door, you never know what you will, you will get, so you embrace yourself and you, you, talk to, you talk to your neighbors. A gentleman in, in his mid-50s uh, opened the door and I introduced myself as his member of provincial parliament. He looked at me, there was no sense of, of recognition or familiarity, which is, which is absolutely okay. And he said, can I ask you to come in for a second? Big second, no, no, you never go inside somebody's home when you are, you are canvassing. And I, I felt comfortable. I had, a, I had a sense of comfort and I said, absolutely. So I walked in, it was a bachelor apartment upstairs. And uh, nice and tidy, very clean, sparsely decorated. One single bed, one little small dresser. You can tell it was not second hand, it was fourth, fifth or sixth hand. Uh, small TV, curtains, a couple of plates in the, in the kitchenette, but clean. And he said to me, he said, I don't know who you are. I take it you work for the government, <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is great, right? At least the <laughs> person knows that I'm there to help them. And he said, uh, I don't know who's responsible for this building, but I just want to say thank you. This is the first home I've ever had. And as I'm talking to that, that gentleman, I still get goosebumps thinking about that, that moment uh, in, in my public service life. As I was talking to that gentleman, you could tell that he had some significant challenges in his life. He was clear in expressing that he's never had a home before. Now he had a stable home. He told me that he's got a job at Loblaws packing uh, 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 grocery bags. And there was an, up, and an aura of stability <coughs> in that individual's health, in that indi individual's quality of life, and self-esteem. And I walked out, <coughs> and I thought, oh my, all the work that went into putting this building together, the years and years and decades of work, and Diane Holmes is not there, which I should give her a shout out, for the work that went into making this project happen, and every single penny got invested. It was worth it just for that one person and the life that got changed there. So imagine, so imagine on this National Housing Day, if we all work together, and I'm so excited to see, see all three levels of government together, that if we all work together, how many lives we can change. How many people that we can bring out of homelessness? I was this morning at uh, Youth Services Bureau, uh, Sleep Out, and we were talking about youth homelessness there. In the rich society, in the rich city, in the rich community that we live in, there is just no justification, there is no excuse for our young people to be sleeping outside or couch surfing. Just, it just doesn't make sense. That's, uh, that's the kind of things that we see on televisions in other parts of the world. And I'm just very, I'm an optimist, by nature, so I'm going to share my optimism with you, which is that I'm so excited, I'm so heartened, because I think the path to the future is, is so bright. The work that the province is doing in its commitment and its resolve to end chronic homelessness when it comes to youth and, and our First Nations and uh, people with mental health and addiction, to end that in the next 10 years, once for all, it is totally achievable. We can do that with the partnership of our city who's out there doing, building in those practical solutions every single day and, and the forward vision that we see from our city, we can do that. And now, 
having a partner at the federal level who has acknowledged that we do need a national housing strategy, that we need to bring new dollars uh, to this movement together. I'm confident we will do it. So looking forward to working with everyone. <laughs> change lives right here in our city, in our province, and across the country. Thank you very much. So how lucky are we in Ottawa Centre, right? <laughs> um, we have got elected representatives in all three orders of government who get it, who understand what it is that we're doing and the importance of affordable housing in our communities. You know, Mr. Nakti and I, uh, several times during construction of this site, toured the property. Uh, uh, it was um, it was difficult, wasn't it? <laughs> and there were there were a lot of things, but to see you know that story that you told, that is what it was for. And we can do that again, and that's why we're all here. This is one example of what we can do. There are other examples across the city, and we can do it again. And to have partners in all three orders of government willing to work with us to do that is absolutely fantastic. Um, Minister McKenna. As an incoming CCOC candidate, I have to tell you, when we welcome new tenants uh, into, into some of our, our homes, uh, after they sign their lease, we invite them to voluntarily sign a Green Commitments Pledge, a little personal pledge on what people can do to make their own lifestyles more, more environmentally friendly. Uh, so here you are. Thank Take you. some time to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and decide which one you want to do. And, um, and then, and then there's, there's, there's a report card a year later. <laughs> and I hope you understand your impact on that. Uh, on right. the so welcome to CCOC. <laughs> So I want to acknowledge a couple of other uh, important folks who are in the audience today. As Mr. Naki said, Deputy Mayor Manette is here with us, and thank you very much for joining us. Et uh, mon ami, le conseiller Mathieu Fleury, qui est aussi le président du conseil d'administration de bah, logement communautaire d'Ottawa, Ottawa Community Housing. Bienvenue. Um, and uh, uh, I also want to point out Brian Luce, uh, who is here as the incoming president of, of CHRA from Wood Buffalo Housing and Development Corporation out of Alberta. Thank you, Brian. And uh, Anne Davidson from the Co-op Housing Federation of Canada joining us from British Columbia. And so many other local leaders, too many to name in the room. But thank you all for joining us on, that, on National Housing Day. And we also have with us uh, another friend of mine, Evelyn Maneri, uh, who is one of the original tenants uh, here in this building, in fact. And we're fortunate that Evelyn has agreed to, to speak to media and tell her story uh, after the presentations today. And you know, when, we were, when Evelyn was getting ready for today, uh, she told us when she was moving in what she expected was affordable housing and what she found was a great community and a home. And Evelyn, you're one of the people that made it back at, at this site, so, so thank you very much. Uh, and Evelyn will be available for interviews afterwards. Um, I'd like to introduce one, one final speaker, uh, Stéphane Gigat, who is the CEO of Ottawa Community Housing. And Ottawa Community Housing is not only one of the leaders in social and affordable housing across the country, but also one of the leaders in green housing. And Stefan will, will help tell us about some of their accomplishments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what, what is an exciting morning like that on a Friday to talk about affordable housing, providing a roof to our tenants in Ottawa? Ottawa Community Housing is not just Ottawa Community Housing. It's a broader community. It's about the people living in our communities. You know that the people living with us may one day move to a CCOC or a private landlord or vice versa. And this is very important to realize that the impact that you have on the day-to-day -day of the lives of the people is significant. And also, when you make decisions, you have to make decisions that they are sustainable. We need to ensure that people have access to affordable housing, to afford affordable uh, you know, food, but to make sure that also we put the mechanism in place to guarantee that they will have access to the rents that they can afford to pay at the end of the month. Uh, you raised some statistics that they are very significant about the fact that you know when you took uh, you take about more than 30% of your income to pay a rent is very significant on a daily basis. So again, for Ottawa Community Housing, being the largest, as Ray pointed out, in Ontario, uh, the second largest in Ontario, and in, in Ottawa being the largest, you know, we talk about 32,000 tenants living with us. 
uh, we look around, and what is very important uh, about our community housing is also to ensure the quality of the housing that we provide, the home that it's called, you know, because it's very important to realize that when you make a decision about development, redevelopment, it's not something that you can do alone. It's done in partnership. We have a very extensive tradition of engaging with the City of Ottawa, Enbridge, Hydro Ottawa, actually consulting with uh, uh, leaders like CCUC and engaging everyone to make sure that we deploy the best solutions possible, that they are sustainable. If we look at the last couple of years, we have developed a green plan. We started our green plan back in 2011, but sustainability is really a journey. It's not something that you start and you stop. It's something that is ongoing. You have to be there, you have to be present, you have to be involved. And that leadership is coming from the great leaders that we have today in this room. It's just amazing. Uh, we're grateful to be here as part of community housing. And I'm grateful to be here on behalf of our tenants. And that's very important to realize it. Because, again, when we talk about the Green Plan, we have embraced that journey, looking at doing retrofit programs. We're changing, we're uh, changing the entire portfolio. We change actually all of the water system of our community housing. The impact is significant. We say year over year $5 million. That $5 million is reinvested towards services, towards capital repairs. Unfortunately, the conditions of our building, you know, are aging. Uh, the average age of our building is 47 years old. So you can imagine you get to a point where roofs, elevators, uh, balconies need to be changed. But we are committed to invest, and we continue to invest. We look also at other programs, weatherization. We look at also LED programs. And partners like Hydro Ottawa, Enbridge, they are really embracing that journey. The financial aspect of it is quite complex. It's not something that you can do alone. Uh, when you start an initiative, you need seed money. You need participation of different groups to ensure that you end up with the result that you expect. But also, when you build new capacity, uh, we built year over year new buildings at Ottawa Community Housing. We had the great pleasure to announce the Carrington Health Hub, very innovative project, social integration, social innovation. But what is important is each and every aspect of the design of the building was foremost about accessibility, visibility, but ensuring also that you get also the environmental impact that you expect from the building, that you can reduce the operating costs on a going forward basis. And that's what we are doing at Ottawa Community Housing. This is our commitment. This is a commitment to our tenants, to the population, and obviously as an organization, c'est vraiment important. Uh, also, I want to point out that we are also very inclusive. Uh, and inclusion is very important because you learn a lot. One dimension that we uh, you know, talk, don't talk much when we talk about environment is about people. People have the power to change the way that you can create an impact. We have embraced policies at our community and housing that they are very innovative. One of the policies is about no smoking. And across the portfolio, actually, people are encouraged to not be smoking on the property, which is reducing the carbon footprint, which is reducing the impact on the environment. We have also a paperless policy. And a paperless policy, what it is, is to, again, reduce the impact. So this morning, thank you very much for uh, having us, having our community housing, being part of the plan, celebrating housing in Canada. We're really proud and proud of, to be partner of this broader community. Thank you. Thank you, merci, Stéphane. Um, for those of you at the back, you'd be pleased to know we're almost in the home stretch now. <laughs> uh, folks who've been standing there. Um, you know, one of the messages today uh, is that affordable and social housing is such a vital part of our infrastructure uh, in our communities, and it underlies so many social, economic, and yes, environmental goals that we all share as well. And the message is that we can tackle those goals at the same time by linking those priorities together. And we've done it before, and you know, I'm pleased to say that since we built Beaver Barracks, uh, other housing providers have raised the bar since and continue to do so, and that's exactly what we want to see. And I want to single out Lisa Kerr, the executive director of Ottawa Salas uh, uh, Supportive Housing Corporation, who just this week, their new project achieved the first level uh, in what will become the certification of the largest residential passive house system in North America. Uh, so a fantastic achievement. We need to keep raising that bar year by year and week by week. And as Meg said, 
I think it makes sense because my notes say that you said that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we work better together when we work together. We have strong partners at the federal, provincial, municipal level combined with the expertise and the experience of local housing providers. We can make significant progress in addressing climate change, in, in tackling poverty, in ending homelessness, and in building. This is what we're doing. We're building resilient, sustainable communities. Um, that's very much what it's all about. So thank you very much, Minister McKenna. Uh, thank you, Minister Nappi, and all the others who are here today. Um, I want to invite Captain Fultan Lefez uh, to come up uh, to help handle questions. And then immediately after that, uh, we invite you all for a short tour of the site. Thank you.